understand by standard of deferred payment? Uh, deferred payment uh, is a payment which are made in future. Okay. And um, uh, money makes possible the credit transactions uh, right. which are uh, not made, uh, which are... Uh, mm -hmm. Good, good, good. That word only. Instant. Transactions to happen. Uh, instant. Instant payments are not. Yeah, good. When instant payment are not done, future payments are done. That is known as deferred payment. And because of money, it is possible to make future payments. If yes. you are not paying something instantly, very good. Heba, and uh, the best thing is that I like that you, you know, came forward and you just mentioned. That's a spread. Very good. If you are prepared for something, you should be confident. Very good, Heba. And okay. one more thing, Heba. As uh, like you missed the session, right? So no need to yes. worry because I have started with a new concept. Okay. So this will just remember, this is your first chapter. You need to focus over this money and banking. And whenever I will start with national income chapter again, before that class, I'll just conduct one more class so that you I can give you a recap of everything. Okay. Yes, so need, no need to worry about the portion you missed out. Just focus on what we are doing right now. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Because I guess you are available for the session right? from starting you are, you are yes, in the session, right? Say. Yeah. So don't say. worry about that. Yeah. So student quickly, I'm just in two minutes. I'm just revising everything. Money is anything which is accepted. If someone asks you, what is money? Then you will write like this. Money is anything which is generally accepted as medium of exchange, measure of value, store of value, standard of deferred payment. But if I ask you, what are the functions of money? How you will answer? Functions of money are divided into two parts. Yeah. Or you can say there are two functions of money, primary functions and secondary function. In primary function, it is medium of exchange, measure of value, M and M. I gave you the hint. M and M are for primary because M is here, na? primary. So M and M, S for secondary, S starts from, like secondary starts from S. So S and S, store of value, standard of deferred payment. Okay. And then, explaining medium of exchange because of money it is possible to exchange things and everything takes place in terms of money exchanges takes place in terms of money and because of money it is possible to sell and buy anything goods or services okay measure of value money measures value of any goods and services so until and unless you don't have money you cannot uh, measure the value of anything okay the value of go each goods and services is expressed as its price you went to shopkeeper, you asked what's the value of the product. He told you the price. And when you went to the billing shop, what you gave there? Money. So value of each goods and services is expressed in price and price of all the good. Value is expressed in price and price is expressed in terms of money. Got it? Value is expressed in terms of money. Sorry, price and price is expressed in terms of money. Okay, this is a relation. You have to write like this. Then secondary function, store of value, wealth. Everyone has their wealth. Okay, whatever you are earning, whatever you have, it is your wealth. Okay, so wealth can be conveniently stored in form of money. And money can be stored without loss of loss in value. There is no depreciation in case of money. And savings are secured and can be used whenever there is a need. Okay, so savings can be done. And whenever you want it, you can use it in future. And deferred payment, deferred payment refers to the payment which are made in future. Because of money, it is possible if you are not making any payment right now, if you are not doing any instant payment, you can make future payment and because of money, it is possible. Clear? Students, everyone, just acknowledge. Yes or no? Any doubt till now? Any issue, any statement, any line you are feeling tough to remember, anything? No. No doubt. Okay. No, no. So, yeah, so again, for next class, I'll be randomly asking, okay? It's not going to be test, but I can randomly pick you up, especially those who answered, those who didn't answer today. So especially be ready for the next class. And Seth, you can let me know in chat box. Uh, are you facing any issue, network issue or mic issue, anything? Because you are not responding. And in my class, I want everyone to be interactive. Because until and unless you won't be interactive, right? Things will be boring for you. Okay, so we, I, from my side, I try to make each and every session interactive. So you have to participate. Okay, you can let me know in the chat section. Okay, students, now coming to the, our very next point. Next point in the sense, next concept. You started money. What is money? Functions of money. Just quickly, everyone go to the first page where you have written the syllabus of money. Money chapter where you have written the syllabus.
right everyone so what we have done we have done meaning of money and we have done functions of money right now we will be working for supply of money so in supply of money we will be studying uh, how the money is supplied and we will be also doing measures of supply measures of supply of money okay so today this portion will be completed and tomorrow like day after tomorrow it is going to be the most important class because directly there comes a numerical asking how money is created in the bank and you have to use a table you have to make your own table okay your own table and you have to give your own example and you have to explain the examiner that this is how money is created so today i'll cover all the theory part of the chapter and it's your duty students to learn it to revise it because if you will not revise anything you will forget everything in the very next day so it's your duty to revise the things okay i can trust you with the things you have to revise it okay so yeah these are the things which are here and uh, most of the students have exams from first week of june like this so i will also try to conduct your few classes in between i hope you are for example today is your class tomorrow you don't have any class so everyone is available yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah okay so i'll try to conduct your a few classes like i'll take some one two or three extra classes because those students have exam i i cannot assure you to complete all the syllabus but i'll try to cover 80% of the syllabus which has been asked in the uh, like in your exam okay because we started very late right so it's difficult for me as well as for you to cover 100% of the syllabus before your exams for the ut but i can assure you that for upcoming after your duty whatever exams you will be having definitely i'll cover all the syllabus but today i like for this exams those who have exams before 10 i'm telling for them 80% we will cover but those who have exams after 10 you no need to worry because till then we will be covering the things okay but yeah i'll try to cover and what you can do from your side you can do a self study self study in the sense you can start reading the chapters whatever i am not teaching give it a reading i am not asking you to learn anything just give it a reading why because when i will teach you it will be easy for you to understand okay because i'll be a little bit in hurry or little bit in pace to make you understand those thing because i will cover those thing again okay but just to make you well prepared for the exam i'll just take your extra classes clear any issue in this or do you want me to cover any other alternative any other alternative from your side anything you can suggest me okay sir okay sir if you don't uh, didn't know the answer no issues you can unmute and say ma'am i don't know the answer okay and why you didn't know the answer you didn't get the concept any issue just write in chat box oh, what is the reason for not answering like why is there any thing from my side like you didn't understand the concept or anything or from your side that you didn't study just let me know if because if you are not getting the concept right now it will be difficult for you because once i'll be completing this concept i'll be uh, you know jumping to the next topic then it will be your duty to revise the things but if things are not clear today it will be creating problem in upcoming days okay so you just drop me your answer like reason okay yeah so those who are students especially amos uh, is the strategy going to work or do you want me to change the strategy or anything you want from my side no it sounds perfect i don't have any other alternative yeah so we don't worry amos you don't need to worry just you know at least give 15 to 20 minute for the other. this one i am completing banking you are getting banking and two chapters of uh, that economics book second book right so just give them a reading okay just try to give it a reading uh, like just read two pages three pages like this and when i will teach you in the class everything will be clear okay but don't worry about the banking chapter it will be completed in that uh, no oh. no your explanation is very good and uh, no complain it just need to study because i was so busy okay so self i am taking it, uh, these thing in a positive way okay that you accepted it that you didn't study but for next class you should be ready because see you don't have classes regularly like right? tomorrow you have, it will be your off so at least try to give 15 minutes to yourself self because i want my eighth student 
to be in the topper list. I don't want any one of you to be lagging behind or not getting good marks. It's my responsibility. You people are my responsibility. Okay. So, Sam, I want this promise from you that today you didn't answer. No worries. But for next class, you will be answering the questions. Promise? You can write in chat box. Okay. Yeah. Yes, students. So, let's just start with the next. Uh, yeah. Amos, you were saying something? No, teacher. I just said thank you. Yeah. Okay, no worries. I'm also, I'm, from my side, whatever I can do, I'll just try to make it 100%. But yeah, I need a little bit of cooperation from your side. Okay? Okay, teacher. Yeah. Okay, students. So now, forget about everything. We are starting with the new concept, which is money supply. Supply is something... Uh, yeah. Okay, staff, no need to stress out. Okay, if you're having hard times, no need to stress out. Calm down. And if you need any help from my side, just text me. I have, I know I have given you people my number. You can text me anytime. Just drop me a message. Whenever I'll be available, I can, from my side, if I can, uh, you know, give you a call and I can explain you things over there, I'm ready. But I need cooperation from your side. And take care of yourself, students, whatever you are going through. Just no need to take stress. Okay. Just chill. Just calm it down and think. Why study is important to us. Okay, why we need to study? Just give yourself a reason to study. That's it. Okay? And from my side, cooperation is always available. You can just drop me a message that, ma'am, I'm facing this and this issue. Whatever you issue, you can share. Okay? I'm your teacher as well as your friend, as well as your mentor. So, you can uh, contact me anytime. Okay? Okay, let's quickly start a new chapter, new concept. So, sorry, I'm just... Okay. Money supply. Money supply. Supply, I guess everyone has heard. And you know, when we did a stock and flow concept, I told you supply is a, supply is anyone? Anyone? Remember, money, supply was a stock concept or a flow concept? Stock, stock concept. Yeah. Yeah. Why it was a stock concept? Because supplying money. For example, if you are giving fees to someone, it is fixed, right? You will give 1000 rupees or $1 that money will, whatever money you will give to someone, that will be fixed. For example, if you are paying fees for a tuition institution, you are paying equal amount every month, right? If you are paying school charges, bus charges, rent, anything, that is fixed. That's why supply is a stock concept, okay? Now I will not, see, I have already made, make my, made myself clear what is stock, what is flow. Everyone is aware, okay? That's why I ask you people just to remember the terms. Because in whole economics, you know, things will be repeated in different, different way. So you need to be confident with your dictionary. You need to be confident with the term. Yes, supply quickly. It is a uh, stock concept. But if I ask you production, it is a flow concept because you don't know what you will produce or how much the production will be every month. For example, today you are producing 10 kg of sugar. Maybe next month there was no rain, there was no irrigation and you were your production was zero. Okay. Same with the savings. In this month, you save 20 rupees. But maybe for next month, it was your birthday. You save zero. So it is also a flow concept. Okay, but supply is a stock concept. So now we will study. These are the two definitions. You can go for one. Okay, I'm explaining both the things. But this needs to be written with both the definition. Money, supply is a stock concept. Then two definitions, you can go for one. Money supply refers to the total stock of money in circulation in an economy at a given point of time. Okay. So money supply refers to the total stock of money. What? Money supply is? I asked you what is money supply? You told me, ma'am, it is total stock of money. Total stock of what? Money. Total stock of money in circulation. Why it is circulation? For example, uh, you, you have made in your house or a gardener in your house. Okay. Every month you give him a salary. Okay, every month you give them two dollars. Give him a two. Give him two dollars. So you gave him two dollars for the, you give two dollars. That's fine. But for him it was a salary, right? And from that two dollars, one dollar he gave it as a tuition fees of his child. Okay, of his son he gave it. So what happened? You gave someone money. Someone gave it to someone. Someone gave to someone. Someone gave to Sunny. So money keeps on circulating, right? Money keeps on circulating. It will not same. For example, your father got salary from your uh, his boss. Okay, he 
what he did he gave one dollar to school one dollar to gardener one dollar to something like that you give money to the school and from that money that school divided it in the salary of teachers okay so money keeps on circulating maybe you are getting a dollar from one person maybe he got it from other and that person got from other that person got from other so somebody expenditure somebody who is spending the money is somebody's income okay for example if i am purchasing a car okay maybe i am spending money but that money is somebody's income right so that's why if i ask you what is money supply money supply refers to the total stock of money in circulation you have to mention that and where the circulation is taking place the circulation is an economy at a given point of time you have to mention this why because money is supply is a stock concept so how i will get to know this is a stock concept when i will mention this slide at a given point of time then it will be known, known as money supply everyone got it yes teacher yes teacher okay yes, now i am explaining second definition the volume of money held by the public at a point of time in an economy is referred to as money supply so you can also write here the amount of money as well the volume of money or the amount of money held by the public at a point of time held by public why because see you are also a public gardener is also a public teachers are also public everyone we all are public okay that's why it is not mentioned here school teacher gardener no the general term is used which is public okay public is for everyone okay so the amount of money or you can write volume of money it's up to you the amount or volume of money held by who is having the money animals are not having the money right trees are not having the money who is having the money public is having the money so the volume of money held by the public at a point of time where in an economy is referred to as the money supply clear everyone yes ma'am okay so these are the two definition you can go for it if you want to write this just write it down whatever you are feeling just give it a reading before writing just give it a reading and think which definition you can remember for long longer period of time write that only but this need to be mentioned for both the definition after writing definition you have to mention that money supply is a stock concept first write money supply then one definition then money supply is a stock concept clear yes ma'am okay so just give it a reading everyone and after that write just decide which uh, which definition is easier and you can recall it for you can remember it for longer period of time
ma'am done everyone done yes ma'am yes, okay students good so now moving to measure of money supply okay now what is i don't know my yeah measures of money supply see measure is something we are measuring something right for example i asked you how much money do you have what you did you went to your home you searched your wallet and there it was 2 dollars and in your bank account you have 10 dollars so in total you have Twelve dollars with you, okay. So that's why if I ask you, how do we measure money supply? Okay, if I ask you, how do you measure your income? So what you did, you um whatever money you had in your hand, plus whatever money you had in your bank, you added both the money and then you told me, ma'am, this is the income I have or this is the money I have, right? In the same way, if someone will ask you, what is the money supply? How do you measure money supply? So the formula is. This is not M one students. M is here and one is down there. Okay, so uh, it was not possible for me to write it like that because my system was not supporting that. So M and you have to write one over there. Okay, in the foot. Okay, clear everyone. Nobody will write like this. Okay, M one. It is M and one is written over here downward. Okay, clear everyone. Yes, yes teacher. So I don't want every anyone to copy it paste like this M and one. It is M and down there is one. Okay. Yeah. So how do we measure? There are different way M one, M two, M three, M four like this. But in your syllabus it is only M one. Okay. So that's why no need to go for M two, M three, M four. Just go for M one. Okay. M one is basically C plus D D plus O D. Now we will study. This is the formula. Everyone should remember the C plus D D plus O D. Okay. Now, what is C? C is basically currency, and currency are basically either you have coins or you have paper notes, and the currency is always held by public. Okay, currencies are always held by public, not by animals, not by any non-living things. They are always held by public. So C refers to currency, and currency are in two forms. Either you will be having currency in form of coins or in the form of paper notes. Okay, and this is held by public. Then D is Net demand deposit, demand deposit in the bank. These can be withdrawn at any point of time by account holder. So these are the deposited deposits which you have in the bank. Okay, for example, you deposited five dollars in the bank. So you have the opportunity, you have that right, you can withdraw. Everyone is aware of this word withdrawn. Yes. Yes, thank you. Anyone who is not aware, just uh, unmute and say no, ma'am. I'll just explain. Everyone is aware, right? Okay, so withdrawal is basically taking out the money. Deposit is it is quite opposite of deposit. Okay, so deposit is submitting the money, and the withdrawal is taking out the money. For example, I deposited ten dollars, uh, and next day I withdraw. Ah, uh, two dollars. So now my remaining balance is eight dollars, like this. Okay, so demand. This is DD is net demand deposit in the bank. Okay, these can be see you deposited, but you can withdraw at any point of time by account holder. It's not like for example, I have my account. Ah, uh, Adip can Adip cannot go and take out money from my account. No, you can take out money like whoever will be the account holder. Only that person can take out. If you have So for example, I Adip sub I submitted submit anyone can submit, but withdrawn only the account holder can be withdrawn. For example, Adip has an account. I deposited ten dollars in Adip account, but next day I went to withdraw it. I was unable to do so. Why? Because I was not the account holder. Adip was the account holder. Only he can withdraw the money. Everyone clear? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And OD is other deposit. There are few other deposit with the RBI. Like for example, there is some compulsion. Like you will study in next chapter. For example, you deposited ten rupees. So it is compulsory that you have to ten uh, percent of whatever you are depositing, you have to deposit it with RBI. It is 
Reserve Bank of India. No need to write it down. I'll just explain in the banking chapter. Just remember this. Okay, I'm explaining. If someone will ask you, how will you measure money supply? You will say, I'll add currency plus deposits in my bank, which is net demand deposit in the bank and other deposit. Clear, everyone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, Heba. Uh, what is the formula of money supply? Like, if you want to measure money supply, how will you measure that? M1 is equal to uh, C plus DD plus OD. Good. C is the currency. Yeah, this is the business. And... That's it, that's it. Adip, C means? Non currency. Okay. Staff, DD means? Demand deposit. Yeah, okay, good. Mohammed, OD means? Other deposit. Okay, good. Amos, uh, can you please tell me currency are in which form? Um, uh, uh, paper notes and coins. Okay, good. Khushi, can you let me know, like, uh, for example, I deposited the money in Amos account. Can I withdraw it? Um, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Listen to my question carefully. Can I, I, depo it now? I deposited money in Amos account. Okay. So okay. can I withdraw it? Uh, no. Why? Because. Uh, um, ne <laughs> yeah, yeah. Try, try, try. Because. Amos, do you want to try? Uh, it can only be withdrawn by the account holder. Yeah, yes, because that money can be withdrawn by only account holder, and account holder is Amos, not me. Deposit anyone can deposit it. No worries, my mom, my mother can go, my father can go, anyone. But at the time of withdrawing the money, only the account holder can withdraw the money. Okay, because. It's like this. Na? For example, I have my account. Uh, Kushi has an account and I went to the bank and told me, Kushi is my friend. Please, whatever amount she has in the account, please give it to me. It is not possible, right? Why? Because he will ask you that uh, whoever the account holder is, he or she has to come. Right, Kushi? Clear? Yeah. Now explain me why, you, why I cannot withdraw the amount from Amos account. Because uh, they can be... Only be withdrawn by the account holders. Yeah, and we are not the account holder. Okay, yeah. good. And uh, yeah, who is left? Uh, proof. Other deposits are uh, with, like, who keeps other deposits? I'm with RBI. Yeah, good. So other deposits are kept by RBI. Okay, so students, whatever assignment I will be giving you, I'll be mentioning all the things. So yeah, now you can uh, write down this. You can put the heading measures of money supply. Then M1 equals to M1 should be down. Okay, C plus DD plus OD. C, then what is DD? Then what is OD? Okay, I'm just, yeah. It is visible now, right? Everyone? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. Just write it down.
one ma'am everyone done yes yes okay, okay. i'm just giving you one minute just quickly whatever you have written like this part only just give it a reading okay just mention just try to recall it like uh, what is the formula just uh, without looking in your notes you can just give it a reading i'm just giving you one minute then we will start with some uh, like other part of this I hope everyone is done. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now, students, uh, just focus because this is the last theory part of money chapter. Okay. Because tomorrow we will be like day after tomorrow we will be working on that uh, money supply, that creation of money, how money, you know, how money is created in the bank. So yeah, this is the last theory part. So be careful, like be attentive. So be careful, not care attentive. Okay. Now component of money supply. It is nothing. See, I asked you how will you measure the money supply. You told me, ma'am, I'll measure them currency and the demand deposit and the other deposits. Okay. So same, the currency and the demand deposit are the component of money supply. Okay. If I ask you what are the components of money, what you will mention? You will mention, ma'am. Uh, components of money are basically like, uh, uh, like uh, it is currency and the deposit. Same, it is sub components of money supply. Clear, everyone? Yes, teacher. Yeah. So basically, components of money supply. First one is currency. Currency is of two types: coins and paper currency. What are coins? Coins are just a minute. I hope it is visible now. Yeah. currency these are token coins token coins why i have written this word token because token are in the form of circular right and coins are also in the form of circular that's why it is written these are token coins whose face value is more than their intrinsic value now is any uh, like anyone over here that who can tell me the word intrinsic what is this anyone you can just let me know whether you are aware of this or not ma'am i have heard it but i forgot the meaning okay others same ma'am i heard it but tell me the meaning okay 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 not an issue see <laughs> intrinsic value is for example the value of an asset yeah good so basically uh, coins see more than their more than their intrinsic value see every coin okay it is of same shape same everything see dollars are all dollars are all similar to coins right but if it is written one in the dollar its value will be different but the same dollar which is of same shape same shape everything same size everything but in that dollar it is written two the value will be different so that's why like uh, it doesn't matter these are the token coins whose face value face value means what is written 
is more than its intrinsic value. What is the value of coin? Nobody knows. Okay, maybe uh, if you want to, you know, construct a coin, it will cost you uh, one dollar, maybe. But whatever it is written in the dollar, that is the face value. So face value is always more than the intrinsic in intrinsic value. Okay, clear, everyone. So what you will write if I'll ask you what are coins? You will say these are token coins whose face value is more than their intrinsic value. Okay. Because value is of only face. Whatever it is written, the value is of that. Okay, not of the coin. But that's why you will mention whose face value is more than it, their intrinsic value. Clear? Now, paper currency. Second one is paper currency. These are promissory notes ranging from 1 rupee note to 2000 rupees note. So, you can just... Uh, everyone is aware of rupee or all that? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yes, everyone sir. is aware, na? right? Yeah, okay. So basically, these are promissory notes. Why it is written promiss promissory note? Because, see, notes are also the same. Okay, every note is made up of paper. Everything is same. But why? If I am, if it is written 100 over there, that means that note is promising you that the value of this paper is 100. If it is written 2000 over there, then that note is promising you that this, the value of this note is 2000. Paper is same. Everything is same. But whatever it is written, that is the promise. For example, I gave you a paper and I told you this is of, this is, uh, I promise you this is, the value of this paper is 200 rupees. But until and unless it is not written over there, it is of no use. That's why they are the promissory notes. Okay. So they are the, they promise you that yes, this is the value. Okay, whether Heba is having 2,000 rupees, Adam is having, the value will be same. Okay, if you are having 2,000 rupees, both of you, value won't be changing. Okay, so they are promissory notes ranging from 1 rupee note. There is 1 rupee note to 2,000 rupees note. Highest is 2,000, lowest is 1 rupee note. So you can note it down. Everyone, just give it a reading and then. Okay, my name Alma. Everyone done? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mariam, done? You can write in chat box if you are done. 
or do you want me to scroll down the previous slide or this was fine Done, everyone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. Now moving to a second thing, which is demand deposit. Okay. Demand deposit is basically, as I told you, these are deposited by the bank. These are deposited made by bank. Okay. You have to, uh, you have whatever you are depositing in the bank that is known as demand deposit. Just a minute, student. Okay, uh, just a minute. There is a small correction, students. I have written made by bank. So it will be made to the bank. Clear? So no need to copy it like this. Okay, everyone aware? There's a mistake there. I have written these are the deposit made by bank. No, bank don't make any deposit. We make, right? So made to the bank. Okay? Nobody will write by bank. Okay, tomorrow if someone will answer like this, na, ma'am, these are the deposit made by bank. Clearly, you will get zero. Okay. So, just hear it carefully that it is, you have to mention these are deposited made to the bank. Clear? Yes, teacher. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, I'm just, I, I cannot write it right now, but uh, you, I hope you people are aware that you have to make a correction over here. Clear? Yes. So these are the deposits made to the bank. A demand deposit is any deposit account on which a check can be written. See, if you have money in the account, then there will be a check. I guess everyone is aware check is something. For example, you want to deposit the money. You uh, like you went to the bank and you submitted a check. Then amount will be deposited in your bank. Okay, but in case you want to withdraw for that also, you went to the bank and then you told me, uh, told the bank that I want to withdraw this and this account, sorry, amount. So, check are used for deposition as well as withdraw. Okay. So, these are the deposited made to the bank. A demand deposit is any deposit account on which a check can be written. So, it is a deposit account uh, for which you get a check. Okay. And you can withdraw this uh, these amount through check. You can deposit as well as you can withdraw the amount through the check. Most of the time what happened, for example, I want to transfer uh, $50 to Heba's account, right? It is not possible to give, you know, uh, uh, this $50 one by one to Heba. So what I did, I just gave her a check. Like this is a check of $50. Go to, I gave her the check. She went to the bank. She deposited there and for after two or three days, amount was transferred in her account. So from my account, the account, the amount was withdrawn. But for Heba's account, what was? It was a deposit. Okay. Everyone got it? Yes. See, what I did, for example, I uh, Heba asked me for $50. Okay. So I have to provide her $50. So it was not possible for me to, you know, have $50 in hand, right? So what I did is I just uh, wrote a check and there I mentioned uh, uh, check is I have to give uh, $50 to Heba, name of Heba and the amount. And I gave that check to Heba. Heba went to her uh, bank and there she deposited the check. So what will happen after two or three days after the once the check got gets clear from my account, amount will be withdrawn, like it will be deducted and it will be transferred to Heba. So it is a deposition for Heba, but for me, it is a withdrawal. Clear? Yes. So, yes. yeah. So demand deposit are those deposits on which we get a check. Okay. And these check are used for deposition as well as to withdraw the things. Okay. Clear? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So just write it down quickly. Then I'll just give you a sum up of money supply.
everyone done yes ma'am yes ma'am okay great so now i will sum up everything okay just a minute yeah so basically what we studied is thus this is a co conclusion line okay if questions come like this what is money supply and what are the components of money supply so what you will write first uh, what you will write if i ask you what is money question is what is money supply and what are the components so what you will write first you will write the definition of money supply and after that you will write component of money supply this 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 and in last you will write this line this is this line is the money the money supply is the total amount of currency and coin outside the bank see these currency and coins are held by public that's why it is written outside the bank okay because you have i ask you uh, how much money do you have so what you did you calculated the money which you have in your wallet that is outside the bank and what money was there that was inside the bank okay so there are two types of money you have one outside the bank and one with the bank if your money is with the bank you won't be saying i have my 10 rupees with the bank no you will say demand deposit okay there you will not mention currency coins no if the money is in your hand with you outside the bank then you will say currency and coins but if the money is deposited in the bank you will mention it as a demand deposit clear everyone yes teacher yeah so this is difference okay nobody will say that i have 10 currency in bank no you will say i have demand deposit in bank but if you have money in your hand what you will say i have 10 currency uh, 10 rupees notes or uh, something anything uh 10 rupees note or anything you can write okay so amount of currency and coins outside the bank so money supply is total of what currency and coins outside the bank and also the demand deposit on a specific day why it is written specific day why because it is a stock concept so on a particular day if i'll ask you what is the money supply it means i'm asking you for a particular day specific day clear so everyone just write it down thus money supply is the total amount of currency and coin outside the bank and also the demand deposit on a specific day everyone done yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah. okay okay students so this was the recap component of the money which we did currency allen bubble coins paper paper currency demand deposits okay clear everyone any doubt till now 
everyone yes or no 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 ma'am no ma'am no. okay so now we have completed money meaning and function supply of money and also we have done this currency held by public and then de net demand deposit held by commercial bank we have done this in our next class we will do this and from our next class we will start with the next chapter which is banking clear everyone after the class you will get assignment so be ready the question will be one word but it will be based on whatever i taught you in the class whether like uh, for example i deposited 10000 rupees in mariam account so can i withdraw it you should write the reason so try to think it be cool just come and then write okay okay ma'am okay and for next class whatever we taught be ready because i'll be asking you randomly for example i ask you i ask i'll ask adib what are the components of money just explain one component of money you have to explain this Okay, so be ready, everyone, with the answers. Okay, clear? Yeah? Yes, ma'am. And yes, you can uh, keep your doubts with you, and whatever doubts you have, you can ask me in the class. Okay. 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 So now you can leave the meeting. So thank you so much for joining the meeting, and uh, take care of yourself, study well, and uh, feel motivated day by day. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Bye, bye. Take care. Bye, bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.